in this video I'm going to give you a way of computing the deck group for any covering space. So theorem let y be a covering space. I probably need to say path connected so while I'm writing it let me put that in. Um, so let y be a path kind of covering space. Uh, let g be pi one of x based at x. H be p star pi one y based at y, where y is in p inverse of x. And let NH inside G be the normalizer of H, i.e. the largest subgroup of G. Such that H is contained in NH and is normal. In NH. Then the deck group is isomorphic to NH over H. In particular, if y is a normal covering space so that actually h is a normal subgroup of g then nh is g right the biggest subgroup of g in which h is normal is the whole of g so uh, the deck group is what we said we thought it would be, which is pi one of x over p star pi one y. In other words, it's g over h. Okay, so let's prove this. I'm going to write down a map. The strategy is to write down a map. NH to the deck group whose uh, image is everything, so it's surjective, and whose kernel is H, then the first isomorphism theorem. will tell us that the quotient is isomorphic to the image, which is the whole deck group. Right, that's the idea. So how do we define this map? Uh, I'm going to call it phi. So to define phi given some element of the normalizer of h in other words this is an element of the fundamental group of x which happens to live in this normalizer we have Well, we can conjugate by it and we don't change anything. That's what it means to be in the normalizer. But by a formula I wrote down last time, which we'd proved in class, this is equal to p star by 
want y at sigma beta y. So these two subgroups, p star pi 1 y at y and p star pi 1 y at sigma beta y are equal. So that tells us by the existence theorem for and uniqueness theorem for covering transformations, there exists a unique covering isomorphism or deck transformation from y to y such that uh, y goes to sigma beta of y and this is what we're going to call f of beta so uh, phi of beta is going to be this map f beta so we need to check phi is a homomorphism we need to check uh, phi is surjective and we need to check that the kernel of phi is h so let's do the first one first phi is a homomorphism um, all I need to check is that if I do the deck transformation f beta 1 and apply that to f beta 2 um, of some point y well what do I get? I get um, f beta 1 of sigma beta 2 of y by definition right f beta is the map that sends y to sigma beta y uh, so then this sends sigma beta 2 y to sigma beta 1 of sigma beta 2 of y the monodromy sigma beta is a homomorphism so this is equal to sigma of beta 1 dot beta 2 of y and that's equal to f beta 1 dot beta 2 of y so essentially the fact this is a homomorphism boils down to the fact that monodromy is a homomorphism that's that's where it comes from okay for surjectivity um, given a deck transformation we want to find a beta such that f equals f beta so let alpha be the path in y from little y to f of y so now I'm happy that I specified that this is a path connected covering space because I need it. So alpha is a path in y from y to f of y. Um, then, you know, set beta equals p compose alpha. Beta is a loop in x because y and f of y are both pre-images of the same point so when I project this path I get a loop moreover uh, f of y equals sigma beta y by definition of monodromy right sigma beta of y is the end point of the unique lift of beta that starts at y while alpha is the unique lift of beta that starts at y and ends at f of y so this is this and now uh, f and f beta which is this phi of beta um, are both deck transformations Uh, sending 
y to f of y. So because they agree at a single point, they agree everywhere. And by uniqueness of covering transformations, so f equals 5 beta. So for every f we can find a beta such that f equals 5 beta. That proves surjectivity. What about the kernel? Suppose I have some beta which is in the kernel of phi. That tells me that f beta is the identity. And f beta is a covering transformation that sends y to sigma beta y. If this is the identity, that's equal to y. Should put some implication signs in. So y is fixed by the monotony around beta. In other words, if I take the path beta, I take the point y and I take the unique lift of beta that starts at y, it also ends at y. Let's call it beta tilde. So that says beta equals, uh, let's say the homotopy class of beta equals p star of beta tilde which is certainly in p star of phi 1 of y based at y. So this shows uh, the kernel contains uh, sorry, is contained in p star phi 1 of y based at y. So maybe you can think about why the other inclusion holds yourselves. It's kind of reversing this argument here. It'll be a good exercise for you. So I've proved that the kernel's included in p star pi 1 y based at y. You can check that the kernel contains the whole of p star pi 1 based at y. Um, so that tells us that this, this is actually equal. Good, this one is an exercise. So this says cur phi equals p star pi 1 y base to y, which is exactly everything we needed to prove. Right, we'll just check this map is a homomorphism, it's surjective, and its kernel is h, which is this, this group. So here's a nice consequence, which I'll need another page for. So if y is a simply connected covering space, then the deck group is isomorphic to pi 1 of x. The whole of pi 1 of x acts by deck transformations. I'll make that look more, more like a 1. There we go. So this is what we've seen, you know, for R. The universal cover of S1. The deck transformation group is Z, and that's acting, and that's also the fundamental group. We've also seen, you know, the sphere double covers RPN. This has a Z mod 2 action. Uh, that's equal to pi 1 of RP2, uh, RPN. Okay, and again, I'm going to leave this as an exercise because it's not hard, given the theorem we've just proved. Um, so this is saying that 
a universal covering space, a simply connected covering space, has the biggest possible deck group of all. It's the group of all 